Scientists turn dead spiders into mechanical grippers. The latest work of engineers from Rice University may resemble a scenario straight from a Hollywood horror movie. Once they die, spiders tend to curl up into a ball. It's hard to see any potential uses in their dead bodies. But Texas researchers found some. Spider legs can firmly and softly grip large, delicate and irregular objects without breaking them. Scientists took advantage of this by transforming spider carcasses into mechanical grippers, creating a new type of robotics they called, necrobotics. Spiders can be useful even when they are already dead. Engineers at Rice University have demonstrated how to turn dead spiders into mechanical grabbers that can blend into natural environments. The post-mortem spider is an ideal architecture for small, naturally derived grabbers, said Daniel Preston of the George R. Brown School of Engineering at Rice University. Research published in the journal, Advanced Science, describes the process in which Preston and his colleague Fei Yap, the lead author of the publication, used spider physiology for a new area of research, which they called, Necrobotics. Preston, Yap and their colleagues at Rice University discovered a way to unroll dead spider legs and use them to grab objects. Preston's lab specializes in soft robotic systems, which often use non-traditional materials as opposed to hard plastics, metals and electronics. We're using all kinds of interesting new materials like hydrogels and elastomers that can be actuated by things like chemical reactions, pneumatics and light. We also conduct research on textiles and wearables. This area of soft robotics is great fun because we can test previously unused materials. Spider corpses fit into this idea. It's something that hasn't been used before, but it has a lot of potential, Preston said. Unlike humans and other mammals, which move their limbs by synchronizing opposing muscles, spiders use hydraulics to move. The cephalothorax is responsible for everything, and in its operation it resembles a bellows filled with fluid. When it contracts, it sends a body fluid called hemolymph to the limbs, forcing them to straighten. When the pressure is released, the legs contract. It's all about the mechanism of increasing and decreasing the hemolymph pressure in their legs. Therefore, when the spider dies, this mechanism stops working and its body curls up into a ball. Spiders do not have antagonistic pairs of muscles. They only have flexor muscles that allow them to fold their legs. They straighten them under the influence of hydraulic pressure. When they die, they lose this ability. That's why their bodies curl up into a ball, Yap explained. Biohybrid robots are nothing new. Recently, Japanese scientists have constructed a robotic finger covered with living skin-like tissue that can regenerate itself and has the consistency of our own skin because it is actually composed of human skin cells. But using material from a dead organism is new. So scientists believe that dead spider robots have pioneered a new area of robotics, necrobotics. The spiders on whose dead bodies the experiments were carried out are spiders from the spider family. This family includes approximately 2,400 species.
The researchers first inserted a needle into the spider's cephalothorax and sealed the area around the injection with a bit of superglue. Just a small blast of air through the syringe was enough to activate the spider's legs, achieving full range of motion in less than a second. Scientists were able to make a dead spider grab a small ball. They used this experiment to determine peak grip strength. Tests showed that the spider made gripper was able to lift a load exceeding 130% of its weight their own weight, and sometimes much more. They then demonstrated using the dead spider to lift delicate objects and electronics, including removing a jumper attached to an electrical board and moving a block of polyurethane foam. Manufacturing most human-made robotic components is quite complicated, but spiders are even more complicated. The necrobotics concept proposed in this work uses unique designs created by nature that may be difficult or even impossible to artificially replicate, the researchers write in their paper. According to the authors of the publication, such robots made from dead spiders can be used, for example, in the assembly of microelectronics. They can also be used to capture insects in the wild. Over time, there will probably be more applications. There are a lot of repetitive pick and place tasks that we could look at. It's mainly about tasks like sorting or moving objects on a very small scale. And maybe even things like assembling microelectronics, Preston said. One disadvantage of a dead spider's gripper is that it begins to wear out after about 1,000 cycles of contracting and straightening the legs. Scientists believe this is related to pond drainage problems and could be remedied by using water binding coatings. A hydraulic mechanism in the cephalothorax allows spiders to control each leg individually which will be the subject of future research. A dead spider doesn't control it. This worked to our advantage in this study because it allowed us to control all the legs at once, Preston said. The authors of the publication realize that their experiments may sound like the beginning of a nightmare to some. But they emphasized that what they are doing does not qualify as reanimating dead creatures even though it looks like the spider has come back to life we are certain that it is dead and we are only using it as material from a once living spider in this case it gives us something really useful preston said Cellular glue will help regenerate tissue, heal wounds and rebuild nerves. There is no need to convince anyone how important it is to regenerate the tissues and cells of our body. Not only the quality of our life depends on it, but also our health in general, and in some situations even our lives. What if it was possible to make these processes easier for our body? Scientists at the University of California, San Francisco, UCSF, have developed molecules that can stick to cells, allowing researchers to precisely control how they attach to each other. According to the creators, molecules referred to as cellular glue, are an important step towards building tissues and organs and can give an impetus to regenerative medicine. 
The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Nature. Is it possible to make our tissues simply stick together? Scientists from the University of California in San Francisco came up with this idea and turned it into action. They managed to create molecules that behave like a kind of cellular glue. Something like this would not be new to the human interior, because our body has the so-called adhesion molecules. They perform multiple functions. They keep our cells organized, create neural circuits, and even direct immune cells to sites of infection. They also support communication between the cells of our body so that the whole works like a well-oiled machine. As we know, our organs are formed in fetal life and then develop during our childhood. Unfortunately, as we age, many of the specific controllers that were responsible for these processes simply begin to disappear. This results in difficulties in regenerating tissues, whose ability to rebuild after injuries or diseases begins to weaken. And among others this is the weakness that Californian scientists decided to remedy. They have created adhesion molecules whose functioning can be controlled by deciding, for example, which cells they should interact with and how they should interact. The properties of our tissues depend on how individual cells are organized inside them. These properties also vary depending on the organ that the cells create. While those forming the liver or lungs are quite closely interconnected, in the case of the immune system, their looser connections are important because the cells should be able to move easily within it. Therefore, in order to synthesize tissues with the expected properties, it is necessary to develop a way to appropriately organize cells, to influence the way cells connect with each other and thus organize them so that they can properly perform their functions. The researchers created their adhesion molecules from two parts. The first of them acts as a specific receptor and is located outside. It depends on which cells of our body this synthetic molecule will interact with. The second part, located inside, is responsible for the strength of the connections it will create. What is even more important, these parts can be freely combined with each other, depending on your needs. Work carried out in this direction may also be important for the scientific world to better understand how the bodies of organisms living on Earth were created in the course of evolution. Moreover, the knowledge acquired during research may also have other applications. It will allow, for example, the modeling of tissues in such a way that they simulate disease states, which will make their examination easier.